this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for stopping by today. Let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be together with these friends out in the virtual world. And I pray that you'll open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to the mysteries in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the title of today's blog post and vlog is The Worry Pill. Do you like to take pills? I am a terrible pill taker. I can't stand to swallow pills and have a very hard time of it. It's been that way since I was in my 20s. When I was young, I was anxious for very little. I had a wonderful family. I had a fabulous, um, a fabulous health. Um, basically, the phrase, the world was my oyster applied to my early years. I couldn't figure out why my mother complained about her nerves all the time. What did that mean anyway? Then, at age 16, the first hammer fell. And over the years, more challenges have arisen. I've had my share of lying awake at night, unable to sleep, or waking up in the night and not being able to return to sleep. Sometimes the culprit has been caffeine, but more often than not, the causal factory factor has been worry, not caffeine. Worry is the state of abiding in fear. Some of us visit fear from time to time. Others of us camp out there, making it almost a permanent abode. Regardless of your entanglements with fear and worry, the Apostle Paul gives us an antidote in our scripture passage for today, Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Here they are from the New English translation. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, tell your requests to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. My friend Donna has a little dog named Parker, cute as can be. I had the chance to visit Donna right after she got Parker, and I got to observe her training of him, training him specifically uh, not to chew inappropriate objects. This is what she would do. When he'd start after something inappropriate to, to put in his mouth, she would stop him, take it from him, and say, not this, this. And she would give him a chew toy. And he would just start chewing happy as could be. What Donna did was she facilitated and instead. Paul's instead in verse 6 is pivotal. In order to replace a worrisome habit, in this case the habit of worrying, you absolutely must replace it with something else. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in worry town. What does Paul say to replace worry and anxiety with? Prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving and prayers of petition. Another word for petition is supplication or gimme prayers. I've blogged about this before, but let's do a, a brief recap. There are prayers of petition or supplication gimme prayers, which is how most people pray most of the time. There are prayers of intercession. Those are gimme prayers for other people. There are prayers of thanksgiving and confession and adoration. And then finally, there are prayers of spiritual command or warfare. And those latter ones are, they're a whole category all on their own. But back to our verses, here Paul is advocating replacing thoughts of fear and worry with prayers of petition and thanksgiving. 
although I often run through the other categories um, when I am burdened with um, worry and, and fears. What happens when we pivot to prayer instead of dwelling in worry town? Well, God sends us his peace. Notice that he does not send us understanding. So often we want to be able to understand what is going on, why this is happening. Uh, we want to know more than it's God's will for us to know. Understanding is not what God promises. God promises instead his peace, which is far greater than our human understanding. Trying to understand things which he never intended for us to understand is like leaving the trail and going off on a rabbit trail. A rabbit trail that diminishes our faith. Accepting his peace, which is greater than our human understanding, builds our faith. That supernatural peace also keeps us from moving from worry town to crazy town. Have you ever been in crazy town? That's what happens when you worry yourself sick or you, you worry yourself crazy. Worry can drive you slap dab crazy if you let it, if you don't confront it and execute a pivot. A pivot is called for when we're faced with worry. A pivot is what we do, for example, when we repent. The word repent actually means to Stop walking in this direction, turn around and walk in the opposite direction. So repenting is a pivot and pivoting is pivotal for defeating worry. Pivoting is the worry pill. It's the pill that you can take to keep yourself from being driven to crazy town by worry. Pivoting to prayer. Some pills are only required once a day like my Synthroid pill. Others, two or three times a day. This worry pill that God prescribes to the Apostle Paul is one that can be taken almost continually. Notice that Paul says that in every situation we are to take the worry pill of pivot, pivoting to prayer. This means that in all of life's challenging circumstances, all of them, they need to be covered in prayer, usually repeatedly. Final thoughts, no shame. There's no shame in praying to replace worry and then falling asleep doing that. There've been times I've felt guilty because I fell asleep praying. Ridiculous. God grants the sleep of peace sometimes as an answer to our prayers. So don't let Satan steal your peace over that false condemnation. Number two, no shame in praying over something repeatedly. That doesn't demonstrate a lack of faith. Every time you are pounced on by worry, pray every single time. Pray boldly and unashamedly. And third, take counteractive measures as directed. There are times when, during times of prayer, the Holy Spirit directs us to take appropriate actions to counteract a worrisome situation. Test those according to the scriptures and verify that it's the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart and then be obedient to his voice. Worry pills. Take as often as needed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for strengthening, strengthening our faith by teaching us to trust. May we pivot to your throne room with our prayers any and every time worry attacks us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as always, it's a pleasure to be with you here at the Resplendent Daughter Vlogs. If you were blessed by this video, you can find more of them at this YouTube channel. I hope that you'll subscribe. And these vlogs are made from my Monday through Friday, almost daily Christian blog, the address of which is on the screen. I'd love to have you stop by and comment and subscribe to that as well. 
And my Twitter handle, at Canton Tweet, is on the screen as well. Feel free to tweet me at that Twitter handle.